so this is where I sit and do design work. And um, I, uh, I have a lot of uh, tools and materials in here. Um, this is my desk. And behind my desk, I have hidden a plow. Wow, that's and a huge plow. Oh, yeah, I really like this plow. Um, <laughs> it's a Russell book craft. And uh, I just I just love it. It's definitely in the way most of the time. So I kind of just, you know, scooch it back here. <laughs> <laughs> that's a museum then, specimen. Yep. And it's hidden back there most of the time. This I, is I think it's one of the largest uh, bookbinding plows I ever saw in my life. <laughs> I like the pressure of that one. I like that it's, you know, it's a vice yeah. and it gets very tight. So yeah. I, I just I love that. Yeah. Um, this is where I store decorative paper and this is where all my books go that I'm going to show you. And then, yeah, this is where I keep all my stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of stuff that oh, yeah. you need for book finding. And you were showing how people um, are storing their long tubes of book cloth and leather. Yeah. And this yeah. is kind of mine. It's uh, they're just paper tubes, mailing yeah. tubes. Yeah. Up there, and that's where I keep all of that stuff. Well, this work and, works great, and uh, that's that's a great, really great solution for storing uh, paper and cloth, and uh, sometimes even leather. Yeah. So it's just up out of the way. And then here's my book press. It's underneath the table. So I, you know, climb around under there. And more stuff under the table as well. Oh, my Do gosh. Do you like your you tools know. real massive? Yes, paper scraps and all the, you know, like, what do you do with all of these boards that you cut off when you're making books? You never know if you might be making a small book and maybe yeah. you maybe you might need that i can never okay. throw them away okay so um i've got a collection of some smaller presses and there is this and, uh then there, there is this uh, cut you used to uh for the girl from the sea story for the for the oh, and shit yes. yeah yes this is the block that i cut um for that and i only printed it a couple of times i printed it by hand because um we were in lockdown and i couldn't get to the book arts league where they have a really great uh vander cook press um but i hope to print that a little bit more a few more times on a proper press at some point and then um here is where this is my backing press it took me many many years to find this press and to get one here <laughs> Um, I'm very delighted to have this. And I'm working on this book with a gold edge. So um, because those the disappearing four edge books are supposed to have gold edge, not mm -hmm. graphite, but I did the graphite because I knew how to do that. But my first attempt was less than ideal. So I will try again. <laughs> um, and I have a guillotine. I don't use it very much. Somebody gave that to me. And then this is a Chandler and Price 8x10, old style letterpress. And I love this press. Um, it was also given to me. The only thing I had to do was rent a truck and go get it, which um, I was able to do with all of the help from the Book Arts League. Uh, those people know their letterpresses and they came to help me and they disassembled this whole machine down to just this bottom piece. Yeah. But that bottom piece is probably still 600 pounds. Um, <laughs> and we had to get it up seven steps out of the basement. So it was a whole, it was a whole project. Yeah. And then this is, you know, my boards yeah. and my, my craft paper and all of that. And, and your half skulls? My what? I saw uh, a skull, I think. Oh. Yeah, it's just a bookend. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happens. Okay. Um, my husband is a potter and he um, he does a lot of skulls in his work. He's, he's pretty amazing. Um, he works in the barn. Okay. Over there. Okay. I just wanted to ask uh, what's what's your family's relationship with your uh, bookish uh, ventures and bookbinding experiments and all that stuff do they share some of your 
interests or that's reserved only for you in, in your family? Well, um, it's mostly me, but uh, you know, I did have my daughter in my Girl Scout troop, so she's made a number of books <laughs> herself. And you know, I've, I've helped my kids with some projects in school where you know, putting it together as a book seemed like the best way to present the project. And um, that has been fun too. You know, we've done birthday parties where the kids make their own little coloring books. And anyway, we've done a lot of fun things with the kids. My husband does not make books. My husband is a potter and um, he's very active on Instagram in a, in a way that I, I need to take some lessons from him. Um, he is clay of the dead on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever collaborate? Don't you use in lays he makes? Why not? Well, I I am thinking about it. And um, what's happened is there's uh, the, the project with the Uppercase Magazine continues and Todd Pattison is getting the next group of binders together for the next, um, the next book in that series. Um, and the next one is a ceramics book. Yeah. And I would really like to bind that one, but I've already been chosen for the project. And there are lots of binders, I'm sure, that would love to bind for that project. So I just reached out to Todd and said, if you have an extra copy of that book, I would really love to bind the ceramics one. I'm already thinking of how I can collaborate with my husband and get some ceramic pieces that I could inlay into the cover. And um, that would be so fun. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if it works out. If it doesn't, I'll have to figure out a way to collaborate with him on something else because I do like the idea. When we talked with this uh, uh, bookbinder, book artist from London, Mark Cockram, uh, he told a story about uh, about a book uh, about, uh, that was a catalog of uh, of an exhibition of uh, ceramics. I think it happened in yeah it happened in Singapore. He wanted to sort of implement some some elements of uh, of the story to the binding, and uh, he had it, this uh, uh, this student from Singapore, uh, uh, Adeline Ko, and he asked her to send him some samples of uh, of clay from there, and he implemented some 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 elements of ceramics in this book uh, in in the book spine and on the cover. So. You may be interested in, in checking the second video of us talking to Mark Cochran because he shows this book there. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that may be of some interest to you. Yeah, I think it's tricky. I've seen a number of books made with um, entirely ceramic covers. Yeah. And I think that although you can do whatever you want as far as an artist book yeah. and use alternative materials and and get to your passion however you get there yeah. but i i think as far as a book that you want to be able to use ceramic is a tricky material to use in a book because if you drop the book yeah. you're going to break the covers so um i'm trying to think of ways to embed the ceramics in the cover where the cover won't be susceptible to shattering if it gets bumped or dropped um yeah, I think that would work better than an entirely ceramic cover, but I've seen books that were made that way. I've seen a book cover made in Gaudi style, uh, you know, uh, where they take a, a beautiful ceramic tile and they break it into small pieces and they rearrange it into new patterns. So uh, there is a certain irony to it uh, uh, when you, you, you take something that could uh, break so easily and you show it. I like the effect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I guess that's it. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Brenda, for talking to us and uh, telling your story and showing your uh, works and uh, your workshop. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was an honor um, and a delight to see you again. Yeah, it's it's a pleasure. So um, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to all of all members of our community and uh, special thanks to our patrons on uh, Patreon. Uh, uh, your pledges, uh, at this moment, uh, your pledges uh, cover all our expenses on editing of these videos. So it's uh, very important to us that uh, you decided to support us uh, with your money. And uh, if you want to join uh, the crowd of our patrons, just uh, uh, use the link uh, uh, down below in the description of this video. 
uh, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube and uh, uh, maybe check uh, audio versions of this podcast on iTunes, uh, Google uh, Podcasts, uh, or SoundCloud. Uh, next week, we are recording uh, a, a, an episode with Ivan Gulkov. Uh, he's a hobbyist uh, uh, printer, and uh, he, 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 he told me that uh, he will show us his setup and uh, some of his designs. I'm sure it will be an interesting talk. If you have any ideas, recommendations of uh, whom would uh, better to talk to in our future episodes, please leave a comment below. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. And by the way, Brenda, do you do you have any advice for us for about uh, who we will better to talk to in our future podcasts uh, besides uh, Peter Garrity? I think that you should definitely talk to Don um, because he's delightful and he's so knowledgeable and his books are so amazing and they use so many wonderful alternative materials, things that you never thought of using on the cover of a book. I mean, Don, he's innovative and um, his designs are fabulous. Um, yeah, he's incredible. I was a little intimidated because I, I feel like you have um, interviewed, I hope you don't include this, but I feel like you've in, interviewed a number of people who are really, people who are big deals. Peter Garrity, you know? <laughs> um, I don't feel like a big deal, I still feel like a student, but when I expressed this to Don, when I was talking to him, um, he said, you know, that he's still a student too. So I guess we'll just embrace that we're all lifelong, lifelong learners and that we're all on this road for the rest of our lives, picking up new skills and new materials and new tricks. And um, I love that plan for me. Well, that's that's a very important thing you you just told. And are you sure you you, you don't want me to include it in, in in the video because it's it's quite profound. Okay, I guess I just put myself in your hands, Stepan. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's true. That uh, the thing is that we want to invite all the different uh, 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 bookbinders of uh, all the different levels and experience because it's really important to show people that uh, bookbinding can be quite different and you don't need to be an expert to make a book firstly next next you showed us your work and uh, your work is really great so uh, uh, I, I understand your feelings I, all, I uh, always feel the same about my own works but uh, uh, your your work is definitely definitely worth the, the story and uh, <laughs> it's really beautiful. Thank you. And, and you've been such a warm presence. You've really lightened up my evening. Thank you so much. It was very nice to meet you. You Thank too. You.